Something super crazy. All right, what's going on, guys? My name is Alex Whitick, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, today, guys, I'm really excited to bring you TT content, but before we bring you that, don't forget, we're going to be doing a 20,000 subscriber giveaway, so make sure you're subscribed, hit that post notification bell, and follow my Instagram at tilted underscore TDI. So, guys, let's pull Smart 5 out of the garage, pull a TT in, and let's rip this thing apart. Right now, I'm crossing my fingers. This thing only has 10 volts in it. It's definitely not going to start. I would usually go through the whole motion of, uh, you know, let's start this thing up, but battery's so dead. Come on. All right, so let's pop this hood. Let's get this battery tender on here, charged up, and let's pull it out. You kind of saw that coming, so we're gonna wait for that to charge up. Then we'll be able to pull a TT into the garage and let's start ripping this thing apart. In the meantime, I'm gonna ride my bike. That's enough of me riding my bike. The car's sitting at 12.5 volts, so let's go ahead, unplug this, and pull a TT in. Let's hope it starts. No, oh my god. The only reason this battery doesn't start is because I actually killed it the first day I got it. I was trying to bleed air out of the diesel fuel lines, and I uh, didn't give this battery a proper life from the start, so I need to get a new battery, but in the meantime, we're gonna let it charge for like five more minutes, and then we're gonna send it. Well, it started right up, so let's pull her out. Gotta connect the terminal. The TT started to start up when I reconnected the terminal, but then it actually gave out, so I don't think that the terminal hopped back off or something funny. Yep, there we go. That's not what we want. Tighten her up. Let's put her back down and let's try to start it. The TT started up. Ooh, she is not liking that. She is loving it. All right, so we got the TT into the garage. I've got it pulled back pretty close over here. We've got so much room to work on it. I've got this whole section over here and I got adequate room in the front. So we have all these lights. We're gonna have good lighting. We got to take off this front wheel, remove everything from underneath the hood that's gonna be in that area so we can have that perfect accessibility to the serpentine belt so we can get it changed. So I got the hood open and right here, we have the intercooler piping that goes in and feeds to the turbo. I went ahead and I removed both these clamps. There's a clamp there and there's a clamp there. And then there's gonna be these two secondary air pump hoses. So you wanna take those two vacuum lines out and then this whole thing will just come out as one hole. So now that that's out of the way, you're exposed to this room back here, you're exposed to all these lines right here, and then you're gonna need to have your belt go into that area down there. But I'm gonna go ahead and take that wheel off so we can actually get more accessibility to underneath. Really hoping that this belt's actually gonna fit. I hope we don't just rip this whole car apart and it doesn't fit, but I got this belt off Amazon. It was $14, came in a couple days, and uh, fingers crossed, let's hope it fits. If you guys have the existing belt, this belt actually just split in half and then just got chucked from the car and it was actually hanging from underneath. I have the old belt and the new belt. I'm gonna match them right up and they look to be the exact same length. This is a six rib. And uh, the reason I didn't go to AutoZone and go to pick the one up because we're in an epidemic. So I didn't want to, uh, you know, go see people. So here I am quarantined in my house, ordering Amazon serpentine belts for a car that I would absolutely never do that for. But here we are, let's go throw this thing in. So now that we have this wheel off, we have so much accessibility to where the serpentine belt goes. We have those two pulleys down there at the bottom and there's a couple up top. I'm gonna have to look at the orientation of it on Google, but now that we have that off, we can literally just snake it up from the bottom, get to the tensor from the top and uh, throw this thing together, get power steering back, get their battery charging back and uh, we'll finally be able to rip the TT once again, which I'm most excited about. Let me know in the comments if you guys are excited to see a TT run. Since we got the intercooler piping moved out of the way, here's the tensioner. We don't actually need to feed the belt in from the top, we're gonna feed it up from the bottom. But the reason I moved the intercooler piping from this whole area was not to feed the belt through the top, but because the tensioner sits right behind the alternator. Now you can see on this tensioner, there's a little pin right here. Now you pull that with a pair of pliers to go this way, but right off of there, there's a little ear with a hole. Now what that allows that to do is when you pull this back, that piece centers it out and it pulls down this track. And then there's a little ledge right there and there's a pin that you're gonna be able to feed through there so that that will be able to move forward. You can make your own pin with whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a nail. Hopefully I can just pull it back and there's enough room on the back side of this because there's not much room to play with, but what you wanna do is feed it in from the side and uh, it's gonna lock in place. You're gonna be able to feed your belt through the bottom. So let's get started. Now, if I was a tech and I was doing this, I would have something that basically it's like a pin lockout. It has a long handle on it with a little little arm hanging off so you're able to use it from the top and just slide it right into place. But in our case, we're just gonna use this little screw. I've already got one in place right back there. It doesn't have much clearance between the block 
and that, but it actually fits. So once I go ahead, I pull that back and I take all the tension off, I'll be able to just slide this in place. So then we can feed the belt up into its little areas, get it all lined up how it goes, and then take the tension back off pull the screw out and then let the tension on and then the belt will be fully tightened up. So let's get to it. So guys, more bad news strikes for me. I took my 5 8 wrench, I put on the little nub right here, I pulled it back and this actually doesn't pull back anymore. And the spring was a little bit stuck, but now I freed up the spring. But then I looked down on the roller on the tensioner itself and all the ribs are basically worn down. And the part that keeps it centered is actually basically completely worn down. And that's why the other belt kind of went. It's hitting into the case like it's bent or something like that. Wall piece that's supposed to hold the belt from going any further over is completely worn down. And then it's supposed to have the six ribs to kind of guide it. And there's only two and the other two are flattened down. So. This tensioner is all messed up. I'm gonna have to order another one, maybe from ECS. I'm just bending the tensioner back into place so, so I can get it recessed up in there, so, so I can get the belt on for the time being. We're gonna get this car at least new, moving and stuff like that because we're not actually driving this car, so it's not like if it throws in my driveway, it's gonna be a big deal. So let's get this belt in here. But yeah, I'm gonna order a new tensioner and I'll do that another time. I'm not worried. Steps to get this belt in there though, there's gonna be an orientation either under your hood, you're gonna see a layout or you're just gonna go on Google, type in the year of your exact 1.8 liter. And you wanna fish this up from the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead, throw this belt on and uh, hopefully it works out well. After some savagery, we got this pulley back in line. I was able to use that pinhole. So now I'm gonna be able to just fish this serpentine belt into place, get it all nice and lined up, pull that pin out and let it roll just for the time being. I'm gonna change that tensioner, but for the time being, I've got it straight, I've got the pin in there. Everything's gonna work out. Everything is gonna work out. I'm about to take that pin out of there and we'll be rolling. And just like that, the Audi TT serpentine belt is all good. It's all tightened up. We've got a new belt on there. Yes, we do need a new tensioner, but everything is all tight. It's all straight and I'm happy with that. And once everything was basically taken apart, like the boost and the wheel was taken off, all we really needed was this 5 8 wrench or a 14, whatever you have, and a little pin. I used a screw, but as far as down by the bottom, this all looks really good. It's really nice and straight down here. And uh, this car has no rust underneath, but uh, let's go ahead, let's put this thing back together so we can get drops on the ground and see if it drives. So we got the car lowered onto the ground, back to where it's supposed to be. But before I go ahead and pull this car out of the garage, I'm actually gonna go ahead, take off the coilover like I had the other day. I'm gonna spin off the bottom of it, see if I could spin on this collar right here. And if it actually does spin on, I'm gonna go ahead and order some Mark V dampeners with some Mark V top hats, so that I can just spin those into the bottom knuckle mount or the Mark IV coilover. So then we can go ahead and have a stiffer dampener in there. We can have a shorter body and we'll have a Mark V top hat that's supposed to be on a Mark V dampener. And uh, we'll get this car sitting right with Mark V top hats. We'll have it super low. Lots of camber, lots of camber. And uh, this car's gonna be looking sick. So I started the TT up just to see if that belt was sitting right and that belt is moving around just right. So that's all good. Everything seems to check out. No weird noises. You always wanna check that before you do anything else. But uh, yeah, this car is looking good. I'm gonna check out that dampener and I'll let you guys know how it goes. Well, this is super crazy, honestly. I didn't expect this. I was really hoping for it, but I didn't expect it to actually happen. So I took the swift spring off of this BC coilover and I found out that this thread is exactly the same. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is order myself some Mark V BCs with top hats and all that stuff. I could just go through. There's like a damaged parts thing where you order one at a time. So I'm gonna order one for the left, one for the right. And uh, I think I'm just gonna order some new dampeners and some new top hats and we're gonna get this thing sitting right. But yeah, if you have a Mark IV and you have BC coilovers, you can use a Mark V dampener to do all this. I know I made that video the other day that was showing you how to make a Mark V top hat work on a Mark IV, which we did and it actually would work, but the bodies are really long and I'm trying to go super low static on this car, but I really want a high dampening and these coilovers don't even have dampening on them. I'm just gonna go ahead, order some new dampeners, some new top hats, get everything working right. Maybe they'll be willing to work with me for the channel. If not, I will let you guys know if it's an unpaid advertisement, but uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and order some new dampeners, but first off, let's get this car out of the garage. If you guys missed the other day's video when I made my own camber arms, definitely hit the link in my description when this video is over so you don't miss out on that video. But for anyone who was watching, I didn't really get to show the camber from the back because the Mark VI was in the way, but we've got eight degrees of camber right there. And I dialed the arms back just so I can have like actual drivability with this car until I actually get a set of wheels where that's really gonna need insane camber. But that looks really good. 
But let's go ahead and pull this car out. Car sitting at 12.1 volts. Oh, like a dream. Battery's all charged up from her idle. Let's back this thing out of here. The wheel turned nice. Before it didn't turn like that, it was so hard. Let's pull this thing out of the garage. Let's hear it. I pulled the TT out of the garage and I went to go two-step it off camera and actually just blew off the boost coupler. I tightened it down with the screwdriver head. Always tighten it down with the eight mil. I tightened it down with the screwdriver instead of the eight mil, but everything's all tightened up. Got the hood closed, let's take this thing for a rip. Got this thing in gear. Let's rip it. Yeah, this thing is quick. I really need the local DMV to open back up because I really need to get this thing on the road. Let's give it another rip. Oh my gosh, we need to get this thing on the road ASAP. It's just as fast as the TDI. This thing is so fun. I really want to do a boosted launch on this thing, but we just put new axles in it, so I'm going to spare them for a little bit, but let's do a little launch up the driveway. This thing is so cool, so quick. I just came up to the end of the driveway. Oh my God. Alrighty guys, well I'm gonna wrap up today's video in the TT. I'm really hyped. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm Smiles. I can't wait to get this car on the road. I know you guys probably are hyped for me to get this thing on the road. We got lots of parts coming in. We're gonna get the hood exit going pretty soon. Got lots of deletes going. Got intercooler piping, so I'm so excited. I hope you guys are as well. Throw it down in the comments if you guys are staying safe, what kind of cars you're working on. Make sure you're subscribed for that 20,000 subscriber giveaway. Hit that post notification bell. Follow my Instagram at tilted underscore TDI. Guys, remember to keep smiling, have fun. Cars are an ex extension of you, and uh, I think every car has its own personality. And I'm just, I'm just loving it. I'm so pumped that we were driving the TT again. This car's been sitting. I hope you guys are hyped that we actually got it to move. And uh, man, we're gonna get this thing registered real soon. And um, we're gonna start ripping it. So I'm so excited to see flames come out the hood. And I'm overwhelmed, guys. So on that note, keep smiling, guys. Don't even put you down. Keep rocking and rolling. I'm gonna do it. Keep revving your cars and uh, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Stay tuned, stay smiling.